Just as the soul of Lahaina is illuminated by its unfolding legacy, Eddie's own journey was one of precious discovery. In his connection to Lahaina lay a family jewel in danger of passing forgotten to the years. That long hidden gem revealed itself to be a cultural treasure. I came to Lahaina looking for someone that I heard about that my grandmother taught as a student, the only student. And so her name was Emma Sharp. I was so happy to find someone that knew my grandmother. Kauhaili Kua, who lived not very far from us, used to be one of the dancers in King Kalakaua's time. I went with her daughter-in-law, who was a friend of mine, so we went up to ask her. She said, I've given that up. I'm a priest now, and I, priestess, and I have only that to do. And so I said, well, you better teach me that because uh, when you die, you're going to take all this knowledge with you. And what do we have? We have nothing. She said, OK, I'll teach you. I said, uh, also, can I ask you, by any chance, is there any material of chants or songs that my grandmother wrote that you have by any chance? She says, no, Eddie. She said, you're too late. I said, why? She said, because when your grandmother died, all the material, all the songs and chants were buried with her. Your grandmother composed a lot of hula songs. And uh, she was a very gentle lady. She was Olu Olu. She greeted people with love and aloha. And I would like very much to carry on that way. Uh-huh. And being that's your grandma, you should carry on that way. The journey's end revealed what Eddie had sought, a graceful, memorable moment of Hawaiian poetry set to song. Kananaka is the name of that noho dance. Who wrote it? Your grandma. That's her song. She composed it, and she did it. By discovering his grandmother's song, Eddie has reconnected with his childhood days in Lahaina. Hey, no, I know.